Amen. Praise God. It's uh, question and answer part two here. A um, lot more stuff was going on today, so I thought I would say hello. I'll make this one quicker, hopefully. So anyways, uh, God bless you. Um, first guy that writes in on the p pastor one here, Pastor Mandela Effect. Um, okay. Um, there is a lot of information. Okay, let's go right to it. On how they did this. Okay, this is actually kind of interesting. <clears throat> this guy's name is the Destroyer Star. It writes, it says, this D-Wave computer can calculate things in seconds that a regular computer would take 10,000 years to do. Wow. But all it takes is a few hours, and one would at least get the basics of how they are doing this. All matter is made up of atoms, molecules, protons, electrons, and so on. That's right. Uh, this machine can calculate backward and forwards on a molecular level, so it's obviously possible for this to happen. Yep, that makes sense. This D-Wave computer can calculate at qubits, and it was at 300. Now it's up to 1,000. Just at 300, it can identify all the matter in the entire universe, basically. What I find interesting is that CERN came on the scene in the late 1950s and in 1959 the Twilight Zone came out and it has an episode called The Parallel and it's the exact same thing going on right now. There is also one where a little girl got lost into another universe. But on a side note about Isaiah 11:6, who is a wolf in sheep's clothing? Satan, of course, but the Antichrist. Get it? Actually, no, I don't. Um, all of this is a message to prepare the way for the Antichrist, and a lot of believers around the world get this. And I am so glad that God has revealed it to them and us. Interesting. Okay, I didn't even see the rest of that. That's cool. Okay. So, yeah. Um, parallel. That's the place that I really don't get into that. I feel like the parallel thing is kind of like um, a different explanation for the parallel natural and the spiritual, you know, but they're giving it some kind of other thing where there's a whole other natural universe, which I think is kind of creepy and kind of kind of wrong. So um, interesting that they've been putting this stuff in people's heads for the last several decades. There's no doubt about that. They've been putting um, subliminal messages, I understand, all the way back into the 30s, back in cowboy movies, and cowboy shows and whatnot. So, um, a lot of strange things have been going down for quite some time, and I am definitely clear on that. So, that's a good, good one here, and bringing God into this, that's good. And it, it is true, I mean, all this stuff has to be connected to what the Bible talks about in uh, all the end time stuff. I mean, there's just tons of in fact, throughout the whole Bible, if you, if you see, there's there's always the leaders leading in, in wickedness, and then God would raise up somebody to shape the nation and turn it back to godliness. You know, I love that thought. And then a lot of the names of the books of the Bible are the people that did that. They were people that were connecting with the top of the line. You know, so if you were to go to preach to CERN and preach to NASA and preach to the Vatican and preach to, you know, the, the, the White House and things like that, that's what apostles actually did. You know, they were in the spirit to do all that stuff. So, anyways, you're gonna, I'm going to need an explanation on this. What is a wolf in sheep's clothing? Um, it's a false prophet, really, in according to scriptures. But Satan, of course, is him. But the Antichrist, get it? So, it looks like you're trying to get the, the wolf to lay down with the lamb. Something like that. And the Antichrist is going to come lay down with the lamb. There's some interesting wording that I've heard from different folks. That's interesting. Um... Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that too. If they can change the new versions of Bibles to be Antichrist Bibles, and could they do that to the final Bible? That's pretty. That's pretty messed up. But uh, I've been learning how to take this whole thing in stride and just you know keep going and doing what I'm doing. If I see something that says something wrong, at least now we know that that's that there's a chance that it's wrong, of course. But um, but when people are just picking stuff just like crazy, that stuff is whoa. So anyways, I think we're good on that one. Um, all right, let's go to the next question. 
Next thought here. Oh. This is the same guy. Same deal. Okay, that's the one I did yesterday. Sorry. Amen. Uh, oh. Oh, here's someone new here. Um, C. Leet. Yeah. On the Minister Paul video. C. The letter C and Leet. Interesting uh, name. I don't know what that is. Um, thank you for making this video. Cool. You're welcome. It's unfortunate to see how many Christians are completely asleep as the enemy is in their midst getting ready to strike them. What is obvious to me is there is there um, are amongst the Christian two groups now, those who can see the changes and those who cannot. Yeah, I feel certain that those who see the changes are walking in the spirit and in truth, while those who do not see the changes are walking only in spirit. Most Christians believe in Jesus, so they're walking in spirit. To give your life to Jesus means you have the Holy Spirit. But it's not enough to walk only in the Spirit in, in order to survive the end days. Yes, believing in Jesus will get you to heaven when you die, but it, or if you're sincere about it and refuse the mark of the enemy. But unless you walk also in truth, it will be near impossible to survive the end days. Interesting stuff here. It's an important element to walk in Spirit and in truth. I personally believe that if you can see the reality, alterations and changes, it means the enemy will have a hard time trying to deceive you. That makes sense. Uh, but if you cannot see the changes and believe that those who see the changes are being deceived, it means you have already been deceived on a grand scale. You basically grab the enemy's bait and he will soon try to reel you in as he changes and alters reality even more. Right. And there you'll be going along with it until he might possibly reel you all the way in and then put you in his net. Yeah, I mean, if people are going to be so Bible, and if the Bible is changing, then it's going to be saying things that's over the top and leading people into destruction. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree that uh, that's not good. Well, this is long. Okay, let's keep going here. I pray that God open the eyes of those who are not able to see this warfare going on. It's spiritual in nature, and we're battling against principalities of darkness from another realm. Yeah, okay, principalities. I looked up these things. I did a video about these, about four different videos on spiritual warfare. Principalities is actually just another word for prince, like uh, peoples. Like, so it's leadership of the world, you know, um, giants of the world, like the powers that be. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness high places is all people who are leading in darkness, spiritual darkness, natural righteousness sometimes, and spiritual wickedness, d darkness, spiritual. So, um, like I said, you, you have to pray for your leaders, but at the same time, they're not going to give you godly advice to honor the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, too. So, it's an interesting little uh, thought there. But yeah, that's a word that people have been putting on demonic forces all the time, and in a way it's true because the people have a mind of the devil, but um, principalities, I don't believe that that's uh, actually spiritual. Um, their mind is from another realm because they get their orders straight, straight from the devil. Uh, most of the people in history who ruled the world, that's what I believe. I highly encourage everyone to still study the Bible. Yes, amen. These changes are meant to show us what is going on around us, and these changes in the Bible have been allowed by God for us to have a way to identify what time we're in. I agree with that too. God is in complete control, not the enemy. The Bible is still very reliable and holds substance for our spirits and bodies. Please study the word of God and don't put it aside thinking it's no longer valid or reliable. Yep, totally agree. But it goes to say, if you have studied it as you should have and have dedicated time to the word of God, then you will absolutely have it written upon your heart and it will be in position to see the recent changes in it but if you have not studied in it and are not familiar with it then that's probably why you can't see the changes yeah folks can't see the changes because they are, are unbiblical 
And people also attacking the Bible and saying there's changes when they're really not is also people who don't know the Bible as well. So it goes on both sides. But yeah, I, I agree with that as well. But to continue to study it now. There are ton, tons of thousands of words which God maintains in the Bible. Study it and memorize verses so that you will be able to surely see any future changes or alterations should they occur. Right. I believe the Bible is your reality alteration detector by your being familiar with it you will be in position to immediately spot any further changes as they occur to have that be your way of knowing you're getting closer and closer to the end I believe that further alterations will occur and once more only those who have studied the Bible even now will be aware of further changes yep I definitely believe that the Word of God will be with us for a, for only a while longer, okay? I'm not sure, but yeah, it sounds like it could just, you know, accelerate into changes if they're getting more technological. And I heard they're making a bigger, large uh, hadron collider on the other side of the world in China. So um, that can't be good. I mean, it's bad enough already. Um, anyway, it will one day cease to exist as the true Word of God. And it will be too late to write it on your heart for those who failed to study it right now. Hmm, yeah. I was making a video. I don't think I uploaded it, actually. It was about, this. we're the last generation who's going to be able to preserve the Word of God. <laughs> we're the last generation who's going to be able to actually tell people experientially what we've read. So, that's kind of a tough one. It's going to be like word of mouth after this for a lot of people to learn word of mouth and write things down on paper and also in, in our own hearts. If you're still having a hard time believing the Bible will cease to exist one day, then please meditate on this, Acts or Amos 8, which everybody's been talking about that a lot. Famine of the land. Uh, hearing the words of the Lord. Okay, oops. Where'd you go? Oh, I just shut that off. Okay, so that's C. Leet. Yep, I yep. I think that's a popular. I think someone mentioned last last night, uh, the or the, I read them last night. Amos and Daniel seven, and then there was not one other one. Of oh, the, uh, the 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 deception, the end time deception. But I know, remember, there, I thought there was one in the Old Testament too, in the prophet stuff. That might have been Daniel seven, where it says, "I am the God that will help you believe the false prophet because you didn't want truth anyway," something like that. But yeah, that sounded like the strong delusion where there's going to be a purposeful thing, uh, or else the. Uh, what is it called? The, the lying spirit. God sends a lying spirit so people will purposely believe a lie. So, yeah. Gotcha. Agreed. Let's see if I can find another one. I know there was a few more from today. I'll just read today's. I'm not going to, I'm not meaning to go too far back here. Um, right, that was last night. Glory has departed video, Ichabod. Bless you, brother, from James. Bless you, brother, too. Amen. Now, here's a controversial one on my sinkholes video. If you haven't seen that, please do watch it. There's a lot of edifying glory to God in that video. It was a really special video. I had, a, I think it was in 2015 or 14, I can't remember, maybe a year ago. But I had about a month of just prophesying like crazy. And I started building up to this. I did a lot of several recordings, and all of a sudden I just went on and hit the sinkhole one and talked about everything under the sun, man. Mass mind control, aliens, underground tunneling in America, stuff like that. So sinkholes and underground tunneling. Watch that video. It's really good. There's some places in there where I just, I just go off about God and stuff. It's really cool. But anyways, Aaron Jones writes in. Looks like the Aaron, E-I-E-R-I-N. This is all real, but Yahweh... Slash God is not the Son, Yeshua, Jesus. The Father is one. Oh, I've got to get this whole question here. Kind of hard to get these questions together. Let's see. Oh. The Father is one. He has a Son, His salvation. The Ruach, the Ruach Kodesh Holy Spirit is a gift for us. Yeah, I saw this earlier, and I thought that you were really nice in saying what you said here. The way you said it was really nice. Um, I, um, non, 
not not going to be in a disagreeable zone when I say, but I strongly disagree with that. Um, the Father is one. Um, I'm not sure how that, where do you get that from, but he has a son, his salvation. Yeah, Jesus is salvation, and he is real, and he's a person. God is not the son. Oh, I see. You believe in Jesus as salvation, but you don't believe Jesus is God, and the Holy Spirit is a gift for us. Okay, so either you are, um, hmm, I'm not sure where you're coming from. That almost sounds like the oneness gospel, or I can't remember who that sounds like. That sounds like a little bit of a lot of different places that it gets the Godhead in, in a way that's very unorthodox. That's a very unorthodox way of laying it out. Um, I'm not coming down on you at all. I'm just trying to like think of how to how do I I'm trying to how do I read this? So I'm reading this. The um, you're using all these Hebrew names for the for the Godhead. I used to use Adonai, Yeshua, Homoshiach, and then the Ruach Ruach Hakadesh is um, or you said it Ruach Kodesh. Yeah, so there's different ways of saying the, the names of the Lord in the in Hebrew. So it sounds like Hebrew roots. Kind of kind of made me think it was the uh, black Israelites. It kind of made me think of the oneness gospel. A lot of different stuff in there that I definitely don't agree with. I believe God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is three in one. I'm a, a firm believer in the Trinity and think it's crystal clear in the Word of God. I don't I don't see how anybody couldn't see that. The Holy Spirit has a mind. He can be grieved. He, he can be lied to. Um, he has a will. Um, it's really, it's pretty clear in the scripture. You can speak any manner of, about the Son of Man if you want. Any, all manner of sin can be forgiven except the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit can be blasphemed. I, yeah, that's, that doesn't make any sense that that's not God. You know, it is, it is God. So, bless you, Aaron Jones. I def strongly disagree with that one, um, but you're, you're, you're kind in the way you said it, so no problem for sharing your thoughts there. But, uh, yeah, where did you get that from? That's what I want to know. I guess that's kind of a thought. Where did you get that from? Let's see the next question here. Um, oh, yes. Thank you so much. So many will be left behind. Oh, that was a while ago. I never said that. Sorry. There was another one. Someone said something. Um, I'm not sure if it's still on there or not. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, oh, yeah. Sister from last night said, Good video on that face like the sun gets rebuked. Amen. Thank you. Um... What else here? Brian Denlinger video. This guy keeps saying stuff on here. I'm not, I'm not going to go there, actually. Excuse me. Oh, there's one guy named Wayne Crook. Interesting. All this has been debunked. It's beyond me how a saved person cannot see whatever. So he's like a really Baptisty guy, and I was challenging him, and he never really answered the questions. A lot of folks, they just like to they talk, and they don't really answer any questions, so... Not really paying too much attention to that guy, but yeah. Wayne Crook, yeah, I think we should talk a little bit more. Chia Cordero. And, uh, my face like the sun video. Listen to yourself, brah. That's what he said. <laughs> like, okay. I did listen to myself. That's, I do it on purpose here. Let's see here. Glory has it. Okay. Gotta find this thing. I wish it was... I wish they wouldn't keep disappearing. It's kind of hard to f get these things together. I should probably figure this out here. Okay, here's one. Um, let's take a gander at this. The Q&A video last night, actually. Um, that actually needed to, a few things to be said there. So... I shared it to get opinion because I didn't think it was wrong after I prayed about it. But I wanted people to read it because I agree with video you made driving the other night about how you cannot let this divide and conquer and go to someone more seasoned than you for confirmation. Thank you for that. I also thank you for introducing me to Paris Reedhead. Amen. I was up to 2 a.m. watching his video. What an anointed man of God. Amen. I was reading Spurgeon yesterday. 
Amen to that too. I agree with uh, Reed Head way more than Spurgeon. But no, Spurgeon has a lot of really good things. In fact, Reed Head preaches some of his stuff too. So, cool. Um, let's see. My computer, and it was so refreshing to go from him to Mr. Reedhead. Thank you much again. Amen. I mean, Sister Crystal, I can't stress it enough. Please, everybody, watch Parish Reedhead's series on videos. So get familiar with them and let them be a permanent fixture in your life. I mean, it could be a matter of heaven and hell for some folks. I'm, I'm not even kidding around. I mean, praise the Lord. Okay, uh, wake up already. All right, Crystal Lane, thanks for brother for being responsive. You're welcome. Amen. As I mentioned some of you guys in the video. Uh, wake up already writes, dear brother, that scripture has also been changed. That one we've been talking about, 2 Corinthians 11, 4. And, and uh, this is what he's saying. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be super nice to this gentleman too. He's a super nice guy. Uh, dear brother, that scripture has also been changed. It now says we should bear with these false teachers before it said let him be accursed. Okay. Now I was going to just say it on here. I'll just, I'll just say it on the video. Um, that is Galatians chapter 1, you know, that you're talking about, let him be accursed, let that, um, anyone who preaches another gospel, let him be accursed, even if an angel brings to you another gospel, let them be accursed, so that's Galatians 1, very different, um, uh, Paul is rebuking these people in this passage, it's like, you know, how he talks to people, like I was talking last night, I'm not going to say it again, but he's, he's rebuking the people, and like, you guys might as well bear with these people, because you guys are so crazy, you know, <laughs> yeah, the Corinthians got rebuked a few times and in fact one time Paul's like talking I didn't even want to come visit you because I'm just I wanted to spare you guys a severe rebuke but then he praises them later on when they start getting their act together because they had a lot of issues with pride and spiritual gift pride and getting the gifts ahead of um, worshiping God that's why he, that's where the love chapter comes from it's like though you though you speak with tongues of men and angels and you, and yet you sound like a gong and a cymbal and a tingling brass and all this other stuff it's like says it's worth nothing yeah it's, it doesn't mean anything so amen brother uh wake up already um definitely disagree with that no that the, the in, in context you can see how he's talking and the let him be a curse thing is from a totally different book altogether so not not rebuking you nothing at all i just i just, you just got this things too mixed up is all it is it's and it's definitely not true the scripture has not been changed and he's not talking about bearing to, to bear with the false teachers in a in a true way. He's trying to make a point, and that's definitely not his point. He would never say that. And if he ever said it in a clear text where it was clear, clear, that would be weird. <laughs> that would be over the top. I don't think we're there yet. Like I said, I still think that the book, that the Bible is still orthodox. I don't think we're to a point where we have to worry about that yet. Um, there we go. So, amen. Bless you guys. Not a problem. I know that folks is doing this because they're serious about doing right before the Lord, and that is to be honored. So, no problem. Um, thank you for this video. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that might be fine for now. I can't. I know there was a few more. Forgive me, folks, for um, not saying this. I think I'm pretty much good. Then I'm gonna leave this one alone. Uh, 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 I don't want to care. I don't care about this Brian Denlinger stuff. That stuff is not. It's too far off my channel to even go there. It looks like. Well, that's pretty good for now, I think. I'm going to leave that alone. But anyways, thanks for everybody for watching. Again, um, do write in. Um, I'm going to be putting up another video soon. I'll be just driving this driving truck this morning about waking up and, and finding something to listen to or read or find a way to meditate and just call on God, just to talk to God in the morning for real. Have a real talk with the Lord in the mornings. It's really, really important. Try, try to develop your time in the morning. And uh, private, ad private adoration of God, to adore the Lord privately will birth public ministry. Um, anybody can go do book reports, anybody can do news reports, and God will not get glory for that. Okay, There is a, one of, one of Jack Chicks, you know, remember Jack Chick, he does these kinds of things, the comic book style, which I highly recommend. Hopefully you can go through 
I got several of them already online. See the comic style? Well, anyways, the, one of the a larger one, the yellow one's called Why No Revival. And one of, the, one of the pictures in there was showing a pastor talking about United Nations and scaring the congregation so bad and saying, Why No Revival? Because this is what we're talking about. You know, this is not. It says, um, Paul said that I preach cru Christ crucified. I, that's all I'm talking about. That's all we're here for is to just preach Christ crucified. That's all you'll ever hear me talking about. And um, these people would fight the powers that be. They didn't sit there and expose it to the church. They fought them ahead, and that's why they lost their heads. So if you want to be scriptural, that's really scriptural to go direct. Go directly to these people and try to get them to change their minds and try to get things to go back to the a godly constitution. The word of God, the constitution, and then the freedom of our nation. That's what it was supposed to be. That's what it was, and it's not that way anymore. It's, it's, it's crumbling. The foundations are crumbling because the thing that made the Constitution work was the Word of God. Amen. And so, um, anyways, yeah, um, I wouldn't mind throwing a track out to someone. If anybody wants, like, a chick track or whatever, you can always, of course, buy them yourself. But if you throw me your email address, um, I'll try to throw some tracks out. Um, I actually have some other ones or testimony tracks. Just email me your address and I'll send you like 10 different ones. And I promise you they will touch you big time. They are so holy because people just telling their own story about how they went from totally lost to totally born again and God working in their life and stuff like that. Just short stories and they are powerful. So I would rather just ship them to you regular mail. That way you could have them in your hot hands and just read them in the morning and start off like that because sometimes in the morning it's hard to get your head together it's hard to fight for the faith in the morning but uh so i'm stressing that again today morning times is what it's about um email your email me an address and i'll send you like 10 of them for free you can go to apostolic faith church online and just call them and they, you can order a bunch for free from them too if you want to they'll just charge you shipping only they've been doing it for 100 years of free material a uh, wonderful ministry very very close to what i believe doctrinally um, I don't think they know about a lot of these some, some of these weird things. They don't talk about that. All they do is just sing great music, and boy, it's a great way to wake up listening to their music. Wonderful old music, and it's just some of the best church music I've ever heard. So, um, Apostolic Faith, it's a great, great church. And anyways, um, I think that's all for now. So, um, yeah, there's other stuff coming down the line. Um, I'm going to be introducing a little bit more to Sister Lorenda. If you've seen her on the video on the Albany Revival, and hoping that um, if anybody likes the music, I know we can get you some CDs. Um, they're not free. They're really, really professionally done. She gave her everything for them. She's got tons of these CDs now. And I told her that I would help her get them all out because I, I bought tons of them to give away. But I, I can only do so much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this isn't a money-making thing for me. It's just for her to make her money back that she gave all her money to put into the records and stuff like that. And I really think they're blessed. They're really anointed records to have and um, she wrote them when she was going through stuff so if you're going through a tough time it's nice to hear this kind of music and so um, everybody in my group listens to the CDs they all love them and it's really nice to see her sing it live too so if you're living in Portland or you live in Albany area um, you know get in contact with us and see if we can get together and have some fellowship time but anyways um, starting off just you know hopefully we can work on our morning times and let's stay accountable to each other and do comment about stuff like that too. Stay in, stay in touch that way. Um, email if you want, nogreaterlove.love at gmail.com. Nogreaterlove.love at gmail.com. You can email me there and just email me your address if you want them or just an address. I can, I can give you a link to the, their, own, their main website and you can just go straight through their headquarters because the headquarters of the whole global denomination is actually in Portland, Southeast Portland. It's like a half an hour away from my house and I go there sometimes. It's a really nice church. So, well, all right, I guess that's it for now. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.